Is this just a fact of life? How did you get into this mess? Can you explain to me why were they so adamant? Estate. Good evening. I'm Victor Malrick. Tonight, a story about a kidnapping and a church. And I'm Stevie Cameron. I've got a story about volunteers who cleaned up a messy oil spill. They want to be paid for their work. Using their own equipment and disregarding the health risks of handling the oil, the volunteers began cleaning up the mess. Dave LeBlanc's claim for 40,000 hours of cleanup work done by the volunteers, plus expenses, is for $3 million. The word you're using for your group is volunteers. Now, volunteers never get paid. No, I don't think that volunteer means that you don't get paid. I think that volunteer means that you... Oh, we go to a dictionary. Volunteer does mean that you don't get paid. No, volunteer means that you enter into a service often dangerous at your own free will. As the oily waves started to hit Pacific Rim National Park and Long Beach, an army of volunteers moved into action. Using their own equipment and disregarding the health risks of handling the oil, the volunteers began cleaning up the mess. They came from long distances to come here to work. They stayed in hotels and motels and on people's floors. They got dirty clothes. They soiled their rain gear, their boots. They took time off from work. Dave LeBlanc coordinated that volunteer effort. There was a need for a job to be done. It wasn't being done, so we stepped in. We did the work. Uh, would you like to go to Chesterman Beach? At the Tofino Fire Hall, LeBlanc set up a command post. He dispatched a volunteer force that he says eventually grew to 1,100 people. They would just basically don the gloves, pick up the bags, and start shoveling the goop. Some people would just work a few hundred yards of a three, four mile long beach. And there wouldn't be a sign of a contractor, there wouldn't be a representative from the polluters, there wouldn't be any government officials around. We were just left to clean it on our own. And they would turn on the TV at the end of the day and they would see that the Coast Guard is declaring that everything is well under control when it really isn't, and oil continues day after day after day for two months to wash ashore on our beaches. At their trailer in Euclid, the Coast Guard's on-scene commander, Colin Hendry, said the spill needed more study. The first thing you have to do is assess the, assess the problem. You can't just deploy numerous forces in various areas when you don't even know what the problem is. Back in Tofino, the lack of response angered residents. This little fishing village has a tradition of environmentalism. Their ragtag army was doing the cleanup, while the Canadian Coast Guard was off trying to convince the American polluter to do the work. Let me ask you about this on-scene commander. Did he clash with the unofficial commander, you? Yes, quite often. Uh, it was, uh, at best, a rocky relationship because um, he just felt that uh, there was no need for our participation. You mean he, he didn't think there was any need for volunteers? That's right. He didn't think that... Well, how uh, did he think you were going to clean up the beaches? I'm not sure. Uh, maybe uh, he just didn't think that the oil was going to continue washing ashore. Although the oil had washed up on Canadian beaches, the costly legal battle would be fought in the United States. More than a hundred claims were filed against the polluter in the U.S. District Court in Portland. Most were from government, but also left standing in line for American justice were the volunteers, who say they're the real heroes of the Nastuka cleanup. They should pay for our costs, reasonable costs in having some type of remedy from the work that we did. What are you talking about here? Are you talking about money for equipment or money for lost time at work? What is it that you want? If they offer us what the travel claims were and, and accommodation and some type of a dirty work allowance, plus some type of hourly, I think that would be satisfactory. Dave LeBlanc's claim for 40,000 hours of cleanup work done by the volunteers, plus expenses, is for $3 million. Back in Tofino, Dave LeBlanc spends his Tuesday nights at the same fire hall from which he coordinated the Nastuka volunteer cleanup. There 
LeBlanc is a captain and the training officer in this volunteer fire department. Give him a slap, give him a little bit of shake. They're volunteers, but LeBlanc and the other firefighters are paid $8 for these training sessions and $8 any time they're called out to go to a fire. And they do it because the people of Tofino rely on them. To date, Dave LeBlanc has spent $40,000 on the legal fight for compensation after the Nestucca oil spill, but he won't give up. I've been to just about every government agency that there is in Canada, and uh, we keep getting a lot of empty promises, but absolutely no action whatsoever. If there was an oil spill here tomorrow, would you do it again? If oil came ashore, of course. This is our beautiful west coast. We, we boast clean beaches, a clean environment, and if oil was to start coming ashore in great quantities again, we would do exactly the same thing. The Fifth Estate will return.